The Politics, Politics, Politics podcast is brought to you, as always, by The Contender, the game of presidential debate. Uh, you can go ahead and buy it now. TheContender.us. We have officially sent to the printer the 2016 expansion. It is 100 cards, including all of your favorites from this political season, including the ones that we'll be talking about today. In fact, we have so much contender stuff uh, to talk about today that we will not even spend any more time, other than to remind you that thecontender.us is where you need to buy it. We are also brought to you by patreon.com slash J-U-R-Y. If you want to support this show, then head on over there right now. You support not only this show, but also our uh, one mic show, Jury, that happens every Sunday night. Man, we are uh, a thank you so much, everybody who's pledged over the last week. We are already up to six hundred and eighteen dollars per week. At seven hundred, I will do the first ever jury in your house tour. I'm going to fly to one region of the country and I'll do politics on Friday in somebody's living room and then jury on Sunday and then a meetup on Saturday. Make that happen. Head on over to patreon.com slash jury to do exactly that. But. Enough of talking about funding the shows. Let's go ahead and do the show with a few special guests. We will do that right now. Politics, 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 politics. Yet another edition of the Politics, Politics, Politics podcast. I am your host, Justin Robert Young, as always, bringing you through the wild week that was and what will be in the political world. And this was uh, an insane one. We have uh, a lot of clarification. Uh, really, uh, I think probably the, the, the definitive blow, the first time that we have any kind of admission from the Bernie versus Hillary camp that there is a decisive victor and maybe the last gaffe. Uh, last gaffe, uh, uh, and that is a Freudian slip of the hashtag never Trump movement, as Trump does very, very well in the Northeast. But to do all that, we need to bring in a few guests. I am very, very proud to have them on. I had to conjole them to be part of this show because uh, they are the wizards that made the contender uh, look the way that it did. Uh, they are not usually political pundits, but for me, they made the exception, and for you, as well, ladies and gentlemen, the ladies of Guts and Glory, Meg and Fawn, say hello. Cheers, Internet. Happy Friday. <laughs> <laughs> we are indeed uh, drinking uh, a little uh, champagne. It's wine o'clock, is it not? It's wine o'clock somewhere, said right? someone with a drinking problem. I uh, mean, whatever. And just so people can differentiate the voices uh, who are only listening on audio, that is the Meg. And let's go ahead sexy, and hear Fawn. The sexy voice. Uh, hello, Internet. The sexier voice. Uh, <laughs> I, all right, I've, I'm going to go ahead and pull back the curtain here real quick because I've known Meg for many years and I've never heard like a, a maybe like as a joke for five seconds, sexy voice, Meg. <laughs> but for whatever reason, this is just your persona here on the internet. It's the it's the lighting. I think it's the lighting. It is the lighting. We it have we have very. Uh, I had to turn off kind of all the hot lights. Too pale. Uh, because they Too are pale. just translucent as, as as a pair of them. So in in That's the true. room, you guys look very like it is. It, it is red like district, but but for everybody watching, sexual here, I think is what you're looking for. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> we got so much to talk about and i'm so glad you guys are here let's start with the republican side uh we, we will do that quick and then we'll get into the democratic side because i know that uh you guys have very very strong opinions on that uh, and strong opinions about everything you certainly do and that is that is potatoes <laughs> green beans uh-huh politics w the holy trinity <laughs> Trump, Donald Trump, does very, very well in all the northeastern states. He wins Pennsylvania, which delegate-wise isn't necessarily the win that it looks initially. Uh, but there is certainly momentum enough that Ted Cruz 
has to make some big changes. Specifically, he has to uh, bring on Carly Fiorina as his vice president. Now, uh, you are two California residents, as uh, as Carly Fiorina uh, is. <laughs> but I feel like there is, like what you guys, I want, I, I'm really, really glad you guys are on. Because I want everybody to understand the complicated relationship that the Bay Area has with, like I was making a joke before we started, like the lean in idea, the, the, the female empowerment, like, you know, the, the boss bitch aesthetic for which uh, there, uh, there is uh, hopes from many culturally to foster and foster more of. And yet Carly Fiorina lost a statewide election here for Senate and is not exactly viewed as like native daughter done well. Uh, now, you guys are, are transplants from, from the East Coast, as I am, but uh, give me a sense, from your perspective, of what you think about Carly Fiorina. Honestly, I'm not sure I have an opinion on Carly Fiorina. She, does, she kind of comes across as, like, a bit of a cyborg to me. She, does, she doesn't, like, I don't associate her with one place or another, and I've kind of intentionally sort of ignored her. I don't know. I... I she came from a company that I don't see as a particularly successful company, and so I, I don't I think that really that would also be buoyed by, like, you know, the tax returns. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that that HP, HP was did not succeed under her. Now, there's a lot of no. reasons she would argue, to be fair, that there's a lot of reasons why that happened. and Because she a was lot handed a garbage pile and was, like, essentially the patsy for someone else's decisions. And, and she makes the case right. that it was that there were gender elements at play, that, that uh, powerful men. The woman card? The uh, woman card. Indeed, card. indeed. That 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 she oh, she man. made she made mention that there uh, that there was some some gender elements. Right. Uh, now, uh, obviously, I mean, and and we will uh, you know get this out of here. I don't think that either of you guys would be voting for a Cruz or Fiorina ticket, right? No. Uh, but Ted Cruz is terrifying and not a human. So then, let me ask you this: Does bringing Carly Fiorina on, understanding that it will never get to you'll vote for him, does? It soften him any. Does does it make him a different candidate, even even in the the fractional, even in it the decimal? It seems like a desperate ploy to combat the Trump effect. It does not seem real. It does not seem genuine. There seems to be no compatibility between the two, ideologically or physically. Uh, they're just. It just seems fake. It seems desperate. Now, I will say to you that you are absolutely right. It is indeed desperate. There is no way that logically you can look at this move and say it is anything other than somebody throwing a Hail Mary. Uh, it, is, it is a final dying embers uh, kind of play. However, can I make the case to both of you <laughs> that this is something that although you might not think better of any of the parties, you might enjoy. Dare I say it? You <laughs> might come back in a month and say, thank God Cruz bought Carly Fiorina on because it has brought me happiness. Wait, happiness in what kind of way? Like, why am I happy? Because he's brought her on? What kind I'm of I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> Here's why. Like, she, she's like a defender of the vagina or something? No. no. We get to keep the button for the contender that is <laughs> Fiorina... Oh, pants pant suits, suits for, for Fiorina, Fiorina, which, by the way, that is topic still alive, buttons, still, still alive. topic button uh, pack, still available at thecontender.us. It's true. Uh, here's why. Here's why you're going to enjoy it. Yes, tell because me. Because she is literally here, only, and I believe only, not because Indiana is important and he needed to make a game-changing move, not because she's from California and Cal if if he wins Indiana then California will be the most important place where, where Ted Cruz needs to do well, specifically in certain counties, like up here in the Bay Area, because everything is proportionally delegated and he's in a delegate fight more than anything. It's because Carly Fiorina is a Trump troll. <laughs> Carly Fiorina <laughs> is there to push the buttons of oh. Donald Trump. Carly Fiorina is there. So... Donald Trump says something awful about her or about her appearance. So 
Cruz can sell to the Republican electorate that he's doing this against somebody in his own party right. when it is incumbent upon him to look presidential. What do you think he will do against Hillary Clinton? How is a man who says, I could shoot someone in the street and you would still elect me president presidential in any way i mean what is he gonna say like i'll rape your face i mean like what literally what could he possibly say to her that isn't that he hasn't already said so i i love so i love that i love i love her yeah as as trump bait yeah. yes like yay another woman gets beat up by a man who sucks woo, woo, woo. great okay if that's like her role fine it'll be funny but like he's already He's already passed well, no. every freaking line. Like, how is she really going to provoke something out of him that because will be here's that Because here's the only much? thing, the only thing that's held up against Trump over the last few months is when he retweeted that awful picture of Ted Cruz's wife. Like, that, that crossed Meaning the line. Meaning that's the only gaffe that has actually, like, Well, that's him. something that, that it, it came in a series of moments for him where it was, like, the, the payoff for, for a lot of the Megyn Kelly stuff. It was like a, a payoff for a lot of uh, the just him being nasty. But the fact that he went after a wife mm -hmm. about like something as schoolyard as my wife's prettier than your wife. <laughs> like that stuck to him. And, right. and he had to back off on that on a way that he hasn't had to back off on much during this campaign. And so what you're sure. saying is yeah. Ted Cruz is put a woman in front of him and he's standing behind her and using her as a shield is what you're what you're trying to tell me he's forcing carly to lean in because he's <laughs> pushing her in the back <laughs> like what's saying, his name like what's leaning? his name bundy style who was like we're gonna put women and children in here and if you want to come get us you're gonna have to kill them first he's he's because that's like the most manly thing you can do he's right? pushing her out as if she's one of those mermaids on the front of a ship <laughs> and he's just saying, just say curse words to Donald Trump. Just yeah. call him anything that you possibly can and hope that he says something about like, well, you know, her vagina. She's like, taint Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that, that there's going to be a point in mm -hmm. the next uh, month or so when you will say Trump said these awful things and now it makes him less qualified to be a candidate. Yeah. And that is something that, that you will say... I, I, I don't think. Thank you. I just think you. She's say, like a sacrificial lamb. That is what funny. you're telling me. No, she's a she's a missile. She is uh, right. a part of the pun. A cruise missile, <laughs> like literally uh, uh, pointed right at the weakness of Donald Trump to make him look mm -hmm. less electable, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, more than he already has done himself by literally just being Donald Trump. Meaning, the best thing the Democrats can do is throw Hillary up against him because. That's well, the Hillary's only thing that Hillary, Hillary is already locked in, which gives us right. a perfect pivot to our Democratic side, which I'm sure uh, you guys are going to have uh, much more to say about. This was an absolute unqualified victory for Hillary Clinton. You saw even before some of the, nor the Northeastern primaries, a lot of the uh, the opinions sort of swing uh, against this idea that like Bernie has a shot. There were there was like a little bit more mainstream media, you know, which. I said last week, I said last Friday, when are you going to give it up? Like, there's going to come a point where you just have to say whether or not you like him or not, he's not doing well enough on the metrics that you, you know, need to have to be the Democratic nominee when you got to say, this just isn't our time. We like him. He do well. It's not going to happen now. And that happened on Tuesday. Bernie uh, puts out a statement saying that he intends to take this candidacy to the convention in Philadelphia. And yet, on Wednesday, slashes a bunch of staff members. And the writing is all but on the wall that it is donezo for Bernie. Uh, would it be safe to say, between the two of you, that it is a, uh, a political house divided between Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. Would that be safe to say? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, and, and, and who? You mean personally? Yes, or you personally. Mean personally. You, personally. Uh, it is certainly a house divided. Though it's a complicated house divided. Uh, Fawn has been a Hillary supporter since day one. And I have been a Bernie supporter, though... Well, I would say my relationship with Hillary is it's complicated. 
Uh, but if you were to list it on Facebook, if I were to list it on Facebook, it would be it's complicated. But I don't know. I mean, I think he served a very like good purpose, which is to push okay, her. Enough, 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 enough of this nuance. I, we, we're, we're, trying, we're trying to do a podcast here. You're talking so about specifics. You're Bernie. You're Hillary. Oh, and yeah? now let's fight. Uh, so All right. So I had the pleasure of meeting Hillary once and in uh-huh. person. Yeah. She is fucking drop dead gorgeous rock star her eyes draw you in like some magnetic superhero superhuman you get near her and you're like quivering and you're like i don't know what to do sure oh my god you're pretty oh my god you're powerful oh yeah. my god fawn is way more of a lesbian than she lets on <laughs> just just fyi also i, I, I will like say i have also women. met hillary clinton i did She's not exactly have that no. same response but the world, hey, the world is a diverse portrait. Women in power are sexy. Indeed, yes. indeed. Uh, yes. uh, and and uh, 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 all right. So now you physically describe Hillary Clinton, Meg. <laughs> I don't. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, all right. So then let's break this down. Right. Uh, uh, and whoever can go first uh, can go first. But okay. uh, Meg, I'm holding the microphone. Are, are you so willing I'll go first. to give up the fact that Bernie has a shot and Fawn? Are you willing to uh, just uh, give a victory speech about how you were right and Meg was wrong and Hillary Clinton <laughs> is the Democratic nominee? <laughs> we'll start with Meg. Meg, are you willing to give it up? I Oh, n- totally. Because for me, it's like I, I'm, I'm not going to like live or die on either of their swords. Like for me. So for me, the reason that I was all about Bernie is because is really just like this is a single issue, which is money and politics. And so for me, that was like, that to me is the kind of kernel of truth at the core of a lot of the problems sure. that we see. So for me- I mean, there still is a candidate in there that is talking quite a lot about <laughs> self-funding. <laughs> you know, and sometimes I hear what he says and I'm like, you're a crazy son of a bitch, but I don't necessarily disagree with that crazy thing you just said, which is a terrifying thing to admit. Yeah. But also, I mean, I don't know. It's not, it's not principles. It's just like- this is what's happening and what is real and you know what I'm just going to say you've now put that on the internet oh, and that's no. going that's going to be the like you know l- l- listen but he's going to come out here he's going to Trump's going to come campaign in Oakland and he's going to be like Make. like you know Oakland yeah. lesbians love me <laughs> they like they love it it's great Bernie supporters come here no uh, all right so but so Trump that, that, w- that was a single issue no no, no. Let, 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 let's let's yeah. let's stay in the party right, here so uh, all right, party. Uh, I would rather focus on not who was right or wrong, but like where we both actually totally agree, which is Elizabeth fucking Warren. Elizabeth fucking Warren should like run the fucking world. Uh, okay. She is amazing. Uh, no, but like that. Way to change is. the I mean, understood, conversation. Understood. No. But here's Elizabeth the thing. Fucking is, Warren. Is, and this is what I've said. There have been so many Bernie supporters that have listened to the show. I mean, they are the most vocal people on the internet. And, and, as much as I have at times, uh, uh, out of fun, antagonized them, I very much recognize their passion, and here's what I say. And I say that to anybody who says Elizabeth Warren. There's no reason why Joe Biden, very specifically as the vice president of a two-term president, and Elizabeth Warren shouldn't be in this race. Yeah. And, the fact, and, and, and the fact that they weren't is where I think the beginning of the undercurrent of Bernie uh, yeah. Sanders supporters who say that this is rigged well, comes from. I guess... And I think I've bought this a little bit, but I guess like the argument that we've heard a ton was that Elizabeth Warren has a lot more work to do in actually making law. And that's where she can be way more effective now. And then after Hillary, she can be the second woman. I mean, I like that. I like I that mean, plan. I like that plan. Or, well, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, this is where it gets all right now. and messy. But like, can she be VP? I don't know. Is she going to be like a lame duck VP? Like she her attacks on Ted Cruz via Twitter are genius, like absolutely unrelenting and brilliant and so well thought out. And like That's maybe she cheap heat, though. It's cheap such cheap heat. Like, like, like she, oh, yes, like, she, she's making but what fun is of Twitter? Ted Cruz Twitter on Twitter. Twitter is only is cheap built heat. Built for cheap heat, cheap right? Heat. Built for cheap heat, and she is she yeah. is popping her base, and and that and that is what she. That's Girls what she gotta should get do. hers too. That's fine, but I guess she's popping and locking. <laughs> she, she indeed, Just indeed so you is. Know. I guess, the, but but like 
my question is, like, how is that not insanely frustrating when there's obviously been this division on the Democratic side about, like, well, maybe Hillary's too close to these people. It is sort of weird that now we're going to get this general election of Trump versus Hillary that is basically just a polite argument at a Manhattan fundraiser where, you know, they've they've both been there. They're in the same circles. That's not a secret, right? Uh, yeah, no. Trump paid Hillary to come to his wedding. We've all heard that he many does. times. He told us. Uh, and, yeah. and I don't know where that makes any of them look good on any level, right? <laughs> Like it, it's 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 terrible on every level, and I would say this: I don't ideologically, like, believe that uh, uh, Elizabeth Warren is necessarily the person that I would vote for. However, I think that without a doubt, she needs to be in this race. Absolutely, right. because right. the two things that Hillary is running on is she's going to be the first woman president, and she is the legacy to Obama's work that he's done for the last eight years. So the fact that Joe Biden who's actually the legacy of the work that Obama's done over the last eight years, and Elizabeth Warren, who's a more popular and better oratory like female politician, is not in this race, just to me seems like, clear the runway, we're going to get Hillary elected. But when have we ever looked at politics and been like, this is the obvious, like, fair thing that should be the outcome of this thing? I just, I, I feel like... And yeah, sure. Elizabeth yeah. would be awesome. Sure. Yeah. But like, are we talking fantasy land? Like, I mean, Elizabeth, like after the snafu that was the Obama administration for the last freaking eight years, like how are we ever going to elect someone who is still very nascent, like in her career? She has so much more to do. And like, I, I don't think the country is ready to elect a very like Ele elect elect a lightly experienced senator. Because that's the dude who just got out of eight years of running the country. Yes, yes, like, obviously but that, that is what I'm that. saying. But no, but they aren't. Like I, I feel like there is this like super big backlash. No, that's but I, but, like well, but she didn't. She chose not to run. Well, whether she chose not to run or no, she was told by the, and, she was told and, and, by and, and, the and party. And I'm just reading the, the 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 tea leaves. Right, right. That now's not your time. Right, exactly. Now's not your time. Your time will be later because listen. Debbie Wasserman Schultz is obviously a Clinton person. She runs the DNC. Uh, she was my representative from the district of Broward County in, um, in Florida. Uh, she, is, she is somebody that is very loyal to, to the Clintons. And like for, from no end. And listen, the only reason why I'm bringing up Elizabeth Warren is because you initially said that, right? But like this has been my refrain. On, on the Democratic side, and people wonder, well, why is Bernie? Why are these all these people so so into Bernie? Why are these people so into Bernie? Because it's felt in the same way, like a a, a hose job on the Democratic side, like it feels on the Republican side. Now, Hillary Clinton is far more popular with Democrats than, let's say, Jeb Bush is with Republicans, but the undercurrent feeling is the same. That it's like this is about waiting your turn and getting a shot at it and not necessarily who aligns with me as a voter, which is fascinating because as I've said in the show before, and I'll say again, the Democrats are behaving like Republicans traditionally behave now right. in that, you know, the, the old adage is Democrats, uh, uh, Democrats fall in love, Republicans fall in line. Right. The Republicans have fallen Madly in love with somebody that might be dangerous I for the future I think they were roofied. Party. Roofied. <laughs> yes. They were not falling in love. Roofied. Uh, no, no, no. Listen, this is like, it is, it is, and you guys both used to live in, in New York City. You know what this is like. like. It is just late. Being roofied? Yeah. Oh, no, no, not roofied. <laughs> Although, who knows? It I've never been roofied. Uh, I'm saying like you are, it is, it is I wouldn't late. recommend it. The, 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 the Republican, the Republican Party is just like, it started out just as a good conversation, and then it got a little heated, and then all of a sudden, maybe you're smoking something, maybe you're sniffing something, and next thing you know, it's July, you end up in Cleveland, and balloons are dropping, and you're like, what the hell did we just get into? Shit is out of control. Things have actually gotten real on a level we were not prepared for. Uh, and yet, the Democrats, very orderly, like, the only person that was up to to have uh, to be defeated by Hillary was a socialist who had only been in the Democratic Party for like 45 minutes by the time that the first primary happened. 
Uh, and the party was never going to support him if even just because he hasn't been there to support them. Like, Bernie Sanders hasn't been a Democrat. He hasn't been at these fundraisers. He hasn't been uh, stumping for other senators saying, you should vote for this person. He's just been this boffin in the corner of the Senate yelling about <laughs> things because he literally has no stakes to have anybody come back on him and say, hey, no, you can't say that because my friend who is also right. part of this bill. But that's why people love that. him. That's exactly why people love him. Absolutely. Right? And that is kind of, well, OK, so the fact that both Bernie and Trump are popular at the same time are show they, they are two different sides of the same coin, which is people tired of like the same bullshit. And yeah, and the same, you know, so th they're complete opposites, but they are also very similar in what they appeal to, which is anti-establishment, just depending on which party you are like you generally support. So I'm not surprised that even though he showed up he's a socialist and then he was like oh i'm he i mean everyone knows he just became a democrat to run for president as you know a party member rather than an independent because he didn't have any right exactly and the, right exactly so the same with trump where he was you know supporting democratic fundraisers and doing all of these things that were very democratic before he became you know a republican candidate so uh, I've well, changed my mind. I'm for Bloomberg. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck soda. Now, you, you want to know what the funniest thing is, is that like he definitely would have run if Hillary was actually beatable. Yeah. And if, 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 if Bernie, if either Hillary came out super damaged or uh, Bernie was the nominee, I feel very much. And like, although he's teased a third party run for years. Like, Trump I, I has, think, you I, mean? Like, uh, Bloomberg. Oh, Bloomberg. Bloomberg right. Bloomberg's hurt. Like, he always teases a third party run because he's got money. So he's like, maybe I'll do it, <laughs> you know, although as far and, and like, oh, God, it just there, there is an element of me that just always rejects the idea that, like, this is just going to further the the this is the most distasteful element of this election beyond all the politics is that like this is just going to further the New York City center of the universe ego more than anything else. You mean Bloomberg running or no, because it's going to be Trump versus Clinton. Oh, I see. And it's going to be like just two people that are like like on the front of the back page of the New York or no, uh, front page of the New York Post. Sports is on the back page, uh, just uh, you know, yelling at each other and bringing up New York stuff and 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 Trump's like real estate connections to the mafia are going to become a thing and Hillary's connections with the Clinton Foundation and every element of sleazy corruption that goes on and like that kind of like white collar uh, uh, stuff is going to come up. It's just going to be so New York. Like, but I don't I, know if people, when people think of Hillary, if they automatically associate her with New York. Do you think that's true? She's the senator from New York. I know, she but do, but is based people... out of New York, her headquarters. If she wins the presidency, she will be giving a speech in Brooklyn. Right. Uh, but do you think she is more commonly known as being part of the Obama administration? But, but and then therefore associated with D.C. versus oh, no. with New York. No, no, no. She's she's New York. I mean, because the only place that they were known of before was Arkansas. Right. And she's not in Arkansas right now. <laughs> she's in Brooklyn. The Clinton Foundation was in Brooklyn. She was a senator from New York. Like she is a New York person. And besides, uh, Obama is Chicago. Right. Like that's where whenever when you say Obama, what city you say either Chicago or Hawaii. Uh, all right, real quick, I want to show you guys something. You guys can see this this screen right here, right? Uh, this is something we always like to bring up the absurd element of politics, and this is certainly absurd. Uh, during Ted Cruz uh, naming Carly Fiorina one of uh, or his is, I, I guess, like the, uh, this is the promise ring of of of, of VP picks. <laughs> like you know, he swears, I, I swear to God, babe. Like you know, if if we ever get there, like we're gonna make it real. Yeah, I, I guess so. I don't know what it is. So during the speech in which he said, uh, uh, you know, eventually we're going to go to the stars, Carly decided to ingratiate herself because, like you said, she comes off a little bit uh, robotic, a little bit stiff. She wanted to humanize herself. And so uh, and so this is what happened. This is audio from CNN. Carly Fiona came out. She had the cheers. She had the crowd. Then there was this one rather strange moment. Let me just play it. We've been traveling around the country and I've come to know Ted and Heidi and Caroline and Catherine. 
I know two girls that I just adore. I'm so happy I can see them more. Cause we travel on the bus all day, we get to play. We get to play. I won't bore you with any more of the song. What in the holy hell is that? <laughs> that was a very bad decision. I've never seen that, and that was a terrible idea. Whoever let her do that, that was a terrible <laughs> idea. <laughs> this is what I love about politics, though. Because these people are not prepared to be charming. No. Right? They, they, they believe they are prepared to run the world. Or funny. That wasn't even funny, let alone charming. She didn't even set it up. No. Like, she, how do you she just tell walk she was up going. in, in, in what like you're conversation? Hooking up, you're hooking up with two girls on your bus? Is that what you're trying to tell us? <laughs> That's because that is what it sounds like. So th this this sounds like a song uh, a song that would be sung, like, on the bang bus. Like, this would be, <laughs> that, that is the bus that they are talking about. Uh, she doesn't even set it up. No, she She's doesn't. She just like, goes, like, I had sex with two girls on a bus today. Now, okay, all right. Now, now it, it, we, need to, we I heard. need to point out she is singing to Ted Cruz's two young daughters. Oh, that's not okay. But this is the problem. Sorry. This is the problem. Sorry. The problem is she doesn't say, hey, uh, I, I've gotten to know their lovely family. That is a problem. In fact, I, got s I, I, I became so friendly with their family that along with Heidi, their, their mom, because you got to work in the mom or else you're just some creepy aunt that's gonna like mm -hmm. steal both of them and move to Colorado or something right <laughs> uh, but you have to say like alright well and with the with with the mom we, we we came up with this song I'm sure all the parents in, in, in the audience know what I'm talking about and uh, we we all sang this together and it was fun right she doesn't do that she does none of no, that no no she literally just starts singing and then the crowd just kind of like uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right? Like, unless she's just nakedly trying to get on auto tune the news. She's just trying to, like, <laughs> like no, listen, I'm trying to. Which would to pop probably do better for her campaign than yeah. that song she just sang. I'm trying to pop a number one single on iTunes. Like, right. that, that's really what I'm trying to do is Two Girls <laughs> on the Bus featuring Two Chains by Carly Fiorina. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, listen, there is something that we like to do here on this show uh, because political polls are boring. They are constant. They happen all the time. We become They're also blind kind of meaningless. Kind of meaningless. So what we like to do is, is kind of spice it up. We like to pick a random poll that affects the future of uh, the next few weeks of the political system. And we like to do uh, something. So, so just uh, uh, feel free to, to hoot and holler as, uh, as, as we uh, get into this. So uh, ladies and gentlemen. I want everybody to go ahead and, uh, it's Friday. I want you to, uh, yeah. Listen, we, 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 we've been drinking all day. We've been having a good time. It's called let's, day drinking. Let's go ahead and take this to the next it's level. It's more civilized. Let, let, let's make the night worth it. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to go ahead and put on your Dracar Noir. I want you to put on your finest suit. Because, ladies and gentlemen, on the floor if you got that booty. This oh. is a A cloud research poll from Indiana, taken from, or sorry, only on the date of April 27th, sampling 423 likely Republican voters with a margin of error of 4.8, coming in third place. The first to the stage, get your ones ready for, at 16%, John Yeah, no, come on, yeah. <laughs> We're supposed to hoot and holler? You can hoot, you can hoot and holler, yeah. What, as, as much as you want. So John Kasich shouldn't have a lot of hooting and hollering. He's, uh, he's, he's, yeah, he's, he's daytime stripper, right? Now let's welcome your co-headliners. Coming to the stage first with a hefty 35%. Don't mind staring at his basketball ring. It is... No, you gotta hoot more than for Kasich. Do you? Okay, all right. Yeah, well, I hooted too much. But in first place, your headliner, 
He has dominated the Northeast, and now he's here for you. He puts the hoe in Hoosier. Hey, all 37% for Donald J. <laughs> I should take my shirt off, but that's not appropriate. Because that's what he would want. It's no, just not what you, I would you're want. You're at the strip club. You oh. don't take your you, you don't take your shirt off. He takes oh, his shirt he off. He takes his shirt off. Yeah. Okay. You're you're throwing bands I right now. You're want, making it rain. I do not want to see his pasty ass body. I'll throw Pocahontas dollars at him. Sacagawea. Excuse me. Sacagawea. That is your pole dance for. Sorry, that was terrible. This, the 27th of April for Indiana, a plus 2%. That was terrible. From, Don't send uh, me hate uh, mail. Donald Trump. Now, you understand, this is pretty much the Republican uh, side. It all comes down to Indiana. If, if Trump wins Indiana, it's we, we have Trump versus Hillary. Mm-hmm. If Cruz wins, then we have a shot at, A, it being a total poop show uh, for, for the convention, and... Uh, the shot of Cruz or maybe some wild other exotic third party uh, uh, coming in and winning. The Kasich has no shot, but but it's no. either going to be Cruz or Trump or I don't know. Uh, uh, Paul I mean, Ryan in a leopard print thong. <laughs> as long as he's lifting weights while he's wearing that leopard print thong, I'm <laughs> totally okay with that. Let me ask you guys this: Who is the most to you guys? Yes. Palatable. Not to say you'd ever vote for them. But platable Republican. Wait, what does that mean? Just one uh, of 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 all of all the bad, who's oh, the best? Christ. Kasich. Cruz. All all Republicans. Oh, all Republicans. I'll because take Kasich. He's the least offensive. I think Ted Cruz. I mean, between his like policies on women and re- his stances on religion, the problem with Cruz to me is that. Unlike Donald Trump, who, like, makes his mind up based on, like, I don't know, whatever his gut is telling him in the morning and the, like, shit he takes in the toilet. It, Ted Cruz has a series of ideological sort of, uh, you know, beliefs. He is principled. That, that, he is principled. That is, that is his, his, his selling point to his audience yes. is that he is trust Ted. Trust Ted at the Ted. end. Yeah, yeah, trust with a capital T. Two yeah. T's. There's a capital T in no, the No, it's not, it's not two. It's trust, not, trust Ted. No, no, just, just trust <laughs> it. Just one T. And one D. He's not he's Zed, terrifying. The, 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 the performer or whatever. No, no, no. He's terrifying and he is ideological and that is what makes him terrifying because he's... His track record is okay, so right. anti-women. Like, I, I understand that you don't like Ted Cruz. Like, I that, don't. That's no, he's fine. terrifying. That's so what's the question? I, 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 again, I, I'm saying uh, any Republican Oh, ever, Kasich. So Kasich, but, but that's of all time? Like of all time? Yeah. And any Republican ever. Because you, you mentioned very, very uh, uh, rightly that you know, Elizabeth Warren is somebody that is more palatable to your sensibilities than anybody. Who on the Republican side? Again, not saying that you would ever vote for them, oh, right? Any, Whoa. Any, Republican. any Republican ever. I mean, that's really hard because as pretty staunch liberal Democrats, we sure. don't actually research much more than headlines of things that we find unpalatable. Yeah. Um, like bigotry and racism and classism and all of these terrible things that we are not interested in being part of. So really, the Republican platform is unpalatable except for taxes. Um, yeah. And and so there isn't someone, honestly, that we would find. But of the three, Trump, yeah. creepy ass child molester or <laughs> the guy with the worst hair ever. Uh, I would honestly say either Kasich or Trump because Trump actually is pretty fucking liberal and he's more of a Democrat than he really is a Republican. And he's so wishy washy that like if he were elected, he might change his mind in the next day, like marry some Saudi princess yeah. and have mixed race babies and decide he was gay. Who knows? Like, it's he, great. It's I mean, great. He, honestly, he's like, you know what? Oscar listen, Wilde. Listen, listen. Re, like, he one, claimed my body and I am now Oscar Wilde's new ghost first, persona. First of all, once you go brown, you can never go down. Uh, it's something <laughs> yes. that I found. I'm rhyming. Uh, it's the best. Mixed race babies. They're great. I've always loved them. I've always loved mixed race babies. Uh, so wait, then, then let me ask you this. 
let's let's understand all these 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 terrible scenarios, I right? Like this is like Escape from New York apocalypse scenarios. Uh, I Hillary would kill loses, Mel Gibson. I'd fuck them. Hillary and I'd marry. <laughs> shit, kill, fuck, marry. Is that the thing that you do? Yeah, marry, fuck. Oh, I'd no, marry Boober. No, no, I'd kill Mel Gibson. I'd fuck Hillary <laughs> Wait, and I'd which marry. Mel Gibson. You escape New York? I don't know. I thought racist. No, that's that's not escape from New York. Escape from New York is anti-Semitic. Uh, the He's other anti-Semitic. Dude. Uh, Kurt Russell. <laughs> Kurt Russell. Uh, no, no. Wait. So, so. If Hillary could lose to any of the three that are running, you would prefer that she lose to Trump? I hate this game. I know. I hate this game. I know. Uh, Kasich, Kasich. Because at least he is somewhat reasonable okay, and like follows. I feel like you follows. just said Kasich because you don't want to be like on wax saying Trump. I already said Trump. I, know, I said I Trump know. I like a thousand sure freaking I times. You, I, I'll make sure I wasn't putting words in your mouth. I said Trump is so unreliable as an individual yes. that he honestly could come out as like the butt party next week. You want, Seriously, you want, and, and actually, he could. That's, that's, that's actually so interesting because I, I totally agree with you that there always is this habit because everybody yeah. eventually has to make peace with who they're voting for because a, a, a national candidate is not for everybody. It's never for everybody on any party, right? So you always have to make these things. And since I always wind up hanging out with, all my circle of friends have always been usually liberal, most of the time atheist people, they always have to make these allowances. And it's always, especially on the liberal side, People saying, like, yeah, sure, like, these people are going to church, <laughs> quote, unquote, <laughs> but, like, they're really secret atheists. And, like, and it's always kind of bothered me because, like, how does that not impugn, like, their ability to tell the truth on other stuff if we want to believe conveniently that the things they're lying about are the things that we want to agree with them more on? However, when it comes to Trump, who has been so fluid on so many things, I feel like it's legitimately something that you could either make peace with or vote for. It's just that, like, yeah, you want to know what he's probably going to, like, if, if, if I am against him antagonizing what I believe to be antagonizing Hispanics, eh, you know, he'll probably forget about this wall thing in, like, five seconds, and he'll just say, like, you want to know what? I looked into it. It's not feasible. Turns out Mexico's not going to pay for it. Too too bad. Anyway, moving on. Now I'm into croissants. Now I'm into blowing up China. Yeah. Yeah. Well, or like, I mean, like, I think. I mean, he's still super fucking risky, which is why I would still choose Kasich if press, because yeah. Kasich is not going to most likely start World War Three. Creepy yes. ass child molester eyes might, and Donald Trump certainly is going to try to do something along the lines so stupid that he may actually accomplish that. Well, you know, Cruz. If if, if Cruz gets elected. He will not have any kind of majority. He won't have any kind of mandate. He might have the the House or the Senate, depending on how well they do, right? Uh, yeah, but I mean, yeah. but I think like Cruz will at least he's been enough of a political animal to know that he's not going to get anything done. Trump will have zero mandate. Now, down ticket will get murdered, right? But I feel like Trump will just act like he got yeah. elected by eighty yeah. percent. And, and, and just, like, start throwing bombs. I bet if Trump were forced to sit down in a fifth-grade classroom yeah. and actually answer how does the government work, what would his actual job as president be, he couldn't possibly fucking answer it. Like, he just couldn't. And so he may start World War Three. He may make butt but sex then again, legal but, in but, all 50 but, states. But then Who again, knows? some people say that that's a plus. That he doesn't think he knows more than he knows and that he will find people that will run the country for him that might be better than a president that thinks like like Nixon uh, or some would say Obama that uh, thinks he can do more than he can and winds up stepping in bear traps because he doesn't have other more seasoned people around to say, hey, avoid. No, no, don't do that now. Don't do that now. Do that later. Do these easy things first and then do this hard thing as opposed to a political novice relatively right. uh, who will make those mistakes. God forbid idealism and actual change. <laughs> well, I mean, again, <laughs> well, because, cause, I cause, guess the point, the point isn't necessarily uh, like, it's like as much as like, oh, idealism and actual change. It's like, yeah, and that's, 
the same thing as saying like, all right, and let's try to uh, hit a home run on every ball like, to give a sports analogy. Like it's like right. that's going to lead to you striking out a lot. Like like you need to do smaller things to do bigger things, and that's you know uh, that's why that, that's the big thing for Hillary right now, right? Is that she knows how to make the small moves to either continue gradual progress or to slowly make larger progress. Well, considering we gave a public talk this morning on risk and knowing that we are big risk takers, uh -huh. like the small baby steps to something big is not quite our thing. And so we're so, so yes, I totally agree with what you're saying. And, and yeah. that is very pragmatic, but you know, uh, I mean, Obama won on the Open concept change. of big, big yep. steps, not yep. little baby steps. And so I still think like we shouldn't just because he was not as successful as he could have been doesn't sure. mean we should stop trying to make big change that makes the whole world just for everyone you sure you don't want to put on like a feel the burn t-shirt like right now like because because that's because that's the, like, you're, you're you're doing the pitch you're doing the bernie pitch that's right true. now she is she but I am illogically in love <laughs> with Hillary. And if I was very honest, I'm still friggin' pissed about Obama eight years ago because Hillary friggin' won that and I have not let it go. And luckily, I am not alone and there are millions of people who are still pissed about that shit. Uh huh. And now, and now yeah. you've won. Yeah. So, wait, wait, no. do you want, do you want to, you want to, <laughs> you want to drop a diss track on Obama in 08 like now? Not no, my no, president. no, I'm asking you. I'm asking no, you. Oh, no, fun. You better not pass that mic. This ain't the Beastie Boys. You don't pass the mic. I'm passing it. No, 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 no. I, I, all right. Get it. Uh, just one sentence. Your anger about uh, 08. Your, your anger as a Hillary supporter. Now that Hillary is well on her way to the nomination, she looks better than ever to win the presidency. Is there well, anything you would like girl, to say? My girl is smart. She learned what happened with her and Obama. She did to Bernie. And she's like, mm, yeah, no, I'm going to do this. And she's a smart lady. And she got, you know, she got where she needed to get. Dude, I wish I had an air horn because. Uh, fram, 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 fram. Shots fired. <laughs> oh, the wounds don't heal. Oh, wait, is alive. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and read your emails. Of course, you can send us emails, justinrobertyoung at gmail.com. Put politics in the subject line. Uh, Ryan writes, I listened to your latest Politics uh, Times 3 episode, and I can confirm that the people at the RNC are definitely not excited for any current Republican candidate. I got the chance to tour RNC headquarters in D.C., and I can't see any political signs in support of a current candidate on any of the cubicle. However... Uh, I did see a ton of Stop Pelosi signs. Well, there's that. Uh, I, I think that that's fairly clear. Listen, if, 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 if the Republican National uh, Committee had their druthers, then we would be looking, we would, uh, uh, all Republican supporters would be putting on exclamation point pins and pretending that Jeb Bush was a real awesome candidate. Anonymous writes, when are you going to give it up? Or at least uh, referencing when are you going to give it up, which is what I asked for Bernie supporters last week. Uh, before Bernie gave it up this week like a prom date. What? I was so ready to link to the Rick Roll here, but you already pointed that out, obviously. Anyway, if Bernie drops out or does not get the nomination, that is what will, likely, will, will most likely, quote unquote, give it up. My wife, however, will most likely not ever give it up because she does not believe that Hillary is somebody that would possibly step in for Bernie. She figures it's worth allowing Cruz or Trump to get the presidency just to send a message to the DNC that Hillary was the wrong candidate to endorse. And I don't fault her for that. She may have a good point, but I really don't want either of the GOP frontrunners to lead this nation. Maybe Kasich would not be as bad, but that has less odds than Bernie. I may change my mind later on, but I don't think I will have to. Uh, but hopefully I'll be well informed when the time comes. Uh, hey, listen, man. Uh, there is a real... There's a real undercurrent here, and and I've said this before, and Bernie Sanders people hate hearing it, but Bernie Sanders is not equal to Trump now. He is equal to Rick Santorum and Newt Gingrich four years ago. There was this strong undercurrent for which he spoke to that nobody believed was real, that nobody believed could curry favor, that nobody believed would stay around, and then four years later, stuff went down. It became a bigger problem than the National Committee was willing to deal with. Now, that would be harder to do on the Democratic side since they are far more in lockstep than the Republican side, and superdelegates can kind of snuff stuff out to a certain extent. But uh, I, I believe that people like your, if your wife is willing 
to let Ted Cruz or John Kasich or Donald Trump be the president over Hillary Clinton. That's what I'm talking about when I say that there is something rotten in the House of the Democratic National Committee. And whether or not they want to deal with it better than the Republicans did is up to them. Dennis writes, I remember when Trump first uh, started running, you stated that it would be a boon for the party because everyone else would seem sane by comparison once he dropped out. At that time, I was struck by how wrong that felt and even typed out half a response at the time, complete with a 1992 Royal Rumble analogy before deleting it. While I will have never guessed that Trump would have made it past the first few states, the Republican had a huge problem uh, in the day that he officially entered. It, in general, the craziest Republican in the nation is presented as the mainstream Republican position each national cycle. See Todd Aiken in 2012, and every candidate would have to answer for his most out, outlandish comments. Now that he is in the lead of the back, uh, pretty much pillar to post uh, with that baggage, as well as Cruz's, will follow them well past this cycle. And this baggage, combined with the fractious nature of either of the top contenders winning, feels like a mortal wound to the party. A Cruz win will probably allow the party to continue longer, and I think the majority of the Republican electorate would get behind him, while a Trump win would cause a catastrophe for the down ballot uh, and a potential for a third party. That's relatively well aligned with the Republicans, possibly the Libertarian Party, to gain a double-digit vote total in a majority of states, bringing a swifter end to the party. So, you know, this is where I kind of disagree, because I don't think the Republican Party is going anywhere, because the Republican Party has always been a million different things. It's called the Big Dent Party for a reason, and there are many, many different elements. There is this one element that is rising up larger and stronger than it ever has before, but you can make the argument that that is in reaction to the establishment, that the establishment and more moderate elements for which the other parties, uh, the other sides of the party feel uh, totally abandoned from are now going to coalesce and rise up stronger later. So the, the idea that, that the Republican brand is tarnished I, I i don't necessarily buy now if if this continues to happen uh past that or past this like if trump and i do think trump's gonna lose uh afterward like they they nominate another uh another candidate like trump that they think that that is still the direction to go then you know we'll see but but the republicans have survived the republican party rather has survived tremendous thundering uh, you know, fart in church failures before. And I don't know if this one is necessarily any kind of mortal wound or gut punch. Uh, Commander Fish writes, I was patiently waiting for the return of Game of Thrones to TV and I decided to refresh myself with the last episode of se season five. For those who aren't caught up, cover your ears quick. All right. So uh, anybody here object to Game of Thrones uh, spoilers? Absolutely not. All right. So here we go. If you have a problem with Game of Thrones, uh, buy the contender, uh, the contender US. Guts and glory is the best thing ever. Uh, that'll be the end of the show. Bleep, blop, bloop. Okay, fine. You're gone. Here we go. This is spoiler talk about Game of Thrones uh, in a big winding analogy to the particular election that we are talking about. Uh, the last episode of season five. This is the episode where Stannis burns his daughter alive and had his army shattered by the Boltons and is put to death by Brienne. Throughout all this, I had a massive realization with the presidential implications. John Kasich is Stannis Baratheon. Let me count the ways. Number one, despite the current crazy situation, they're right and they know it. And that's why they refuse to back down. Since Joffrey and Tommen aren't Robert's children, Stannis as the oldest Baratheon brother was the rightful heir. Likewise, John Kasich on paper is the perfect Republican presidential candidate. Experience in Washington where he can lay claim to balancing the budget. A well-liked governor of an absolutely crucial swing state. And a platform that is conservative enough to placate some of the base while moderate enough to win over independence. Both found themselves in increasingly hopeless situations, but they pressed on because of their self-righteousness. Number two! They are both angry dudes hated by those on the inside. Loris Tyrell said back in season one that Stannis had, quote, the personality, uh, the personality of a lobster, unquote, when he was trying to encourage uh, Renly to challenge Stannis for the Iron Throne. Kasich is well known for rubbing fellow established Republicans the wrong way with his temper, which may explain why he was never the quote unquote establishment choice. Number three. Uh, you want to like them, but they're deeply flawed in major ways. Stannis' strange religion and willingness to burn his own children alive uh, scares a large part off of his forces. Kasich is not conservative enough for many Republicans, and his stance on abortion and reproductive rights scares off many Democrats and independents who would otherwise support him. And finally, number four... Their hopes and dreams are dashed by people who are quote-unquote unconventional. The Boltons are nuts. 
That's no secret with the flaying and torturing and all. Unconventional, you might say. Trump and Cruz aren't nuts in that sense, but I think that it's fair to say that they're both very unconventional GOP presidential choices in their own reasons. But wait, one more. Reason five, quote unquote, or sorry, uh, and uh, if and when they don't make it out alive, they're both ultimately going to be put to death by a woman with short blonde hair who makes many people a bit uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't think I need to go any further on this one. Welcome to slavery, friends. Love the show. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much to Commander Fish for writing that in. Uh, guys, thank you so much, Guts and Glory, for joining me here on the show. Uh, any uh, any any final words here? I, I know you guys don't make political punditry a regular part of your day. Are there any final uh, parting shots that you'd like to make to everybody listening? Oh, you mean by the contender at the contender <laughs> dot us? Indeed, indeed. Uh, uh, and then uh, if people want to follow more uh, of your work, uh, guts and glory dot us. No? Guts, glory, and oh, guts, dot glory, and us. Dot US. Yes, right. or you can find us on the Twitters and the Instagram at guts, glory, and us. Uh, when I say that they are uh, two of not only my favorite people, but I believe the best designers in America, that uh, shows that a uh, I am loyal to my friends, and I uh, I, I'm, I don't have a comprehensive idea of the design <laughs> of America. However, as far as my knowledge stretches. I believe you guys are uh, the tits. That's so thank very you guys kind. so much. I for think being you're around. the balls. So. And I will hang for you. <laughs> <laughs> Low <laughs> and proud. <laughs> Email thank Justin you. Robert Young at gmail.com. Buy the contender at thecontender.us. Music provided by Valesco and Trop Killers. Ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and check out everywhere, every social media platform, because Justin R. Young is where you can find politics, me. Politics, politics. Folks. Some people talk about politics. Other podcasts talk about politics. But this is the only show that truly discusses politics. Until next time, see you next week. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>